Hey, neighbor. Just gonna get right into your question of the day because I always forget to do this. Um, which Iron Man suit was the best one? Honestly, so I'm gonna cheat because I'm gonna go with Iron Patriot. And I know it's not an Iron Man suit, it's a War, Mach War Machine suit, but Iron Patriot's the best suit of armor in any of the Iron Man movies, like, bar none. It's like Iron Patriot, War Machine, and then anything that Tony Stark does. I do know that Tony Stark did make War Machine, but, like, I want to say the best, like, Iron Man suit is the Mark I, the one with the flamethrower that he's using to escape the cave, because um, that one's just so cool. And then, like, the test flight one, where it's just all silver and stuff, that's pretty cool, too. Um, I don't know. I think... I think I like the circle, uh, the circle chess pieces better than the triangle chess pieces. I don't know. Like if I had to just pick one Tony Stark Iron Man suit, I would I would probably say the Mark One. So I watched. Two Spider-Man movies for the first time uh, over the past week. I watched Spider-Man Into the, Into the Spider-Verse and Spider-Man Far From Home. I went and saw Spider-Man Spider Far From Home maybe the second day it came out. And I, I want to be honest with you. I think, I think it's overrated. And I think it's especially overrated as a Spider-Man movie. The main reason I think this is the, the scope of the overall movie was too grand and too spectacular and too big for Spider-Man. Normally when we see Spider-Man, it's on the island of New York. And yes, he can save the world from New York, but he's not traveling across the, the, the world to different locations where Nick Fury has uh, identified that elemental monsters are coming out of the woodworks and Jake Gyllenhaal is killing them as Mysterio. I just believe that the entire scope of the movie was too big for Spider-Man. Spider-Man should be saving New York. And I know that was going to be a theme in this movie that, well, he's not going to be in New York, so you kind of just have to live with it. And I don't believe that the movie itself was bad. I think it was a very well-written, well-paced the, there was clever use of humor, and I liked Tom Holland. Obviously, he's a great Spider-Man. Jake Gyllenhaal was great as the antagonist. Uh, Nick Fury not being actually Nick Fury at the end is pretty funny, too. But I don't believe this was the best Spider-Man movie we've ever seen. Spider-Man felt completely out of his element, and I, I really wanted to, to feel more of that, like, true comic book feel and that spider-man that superhero feeling and what we got was a generic action movie and it was really good don't don't get me wrong but it wasn't a great spider-man movie if you replaced spider-man with james bond or jason bourne it could be the same exact movie without a dude swinging around on spider webs instead he has like a grapple hook it, it, I don't think that Spider-Man was like the thing that stood out from that movie. Whereas in Into the Spider-Verse, which I made the mistake of not seeing in theaters and I just caught it on Netflix for the first time, that felt like a Spider-Man Spider movie. I, th I honestly believe that Into the Spider-Verse is the best Spider-Man movie we've ever got. It developed a really good antagonist in uh, Kingpin could understand why he was doing the things that he was doing although it's kind of weird because you're not going to get your family back because it's going to be them from a different universe maybe they have similar like they've gone through similar experiences maybe the only thing that's different is who the actual spider-man is but that's not your kid that's not your wife those people are are dead so i i understood it from that point i think he was extremely relatable like obviously you want to spend time with your your friends, your family. And Peter B. Parker was a great character. He almost overshined some of Miles a little bit just because of how good of a character he was. And 
Miles really didn't get control of his Spider-Man powers until maybe the middle of the third act when he spray paints the suit and is all awesome. I really liked Prowler in it too. You had the, wow, this person uh, or this character is being kind of foreshadowed the entire time. And then he dies and it's like the Uncle Ben tragedy, but kind of not the same. I, I really, I really liked Into the Spider-Verse. I think that, I, again, I'm really disappointed in myself that I didn't see it in theaters. I think that it might be the best Marvel, Marvel movie I've ever seen. Wrapping it all up, yes, Far From Home is a great movie. It just didn't feel like a Spider-Man movie. I'll probably give it like a, a 7 out of 10, whereas Into the Spider-Verse might get it 10. Let me know what your favorite Spider-Man movie is. Let me know if I'm completely off base on Far From Home. And I mean, I know I'm not wrong with Into the Spider-Verse being an amazing movie, so you can't tell me that that's not true. But kind of let me know what your thoughts are there. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Leave some comments down below if you think I'm completely off base with my review of Spider-Man Far From Home. You can follow me on Twitter at 90s Guy Kev. You can follow Tom on Twitter at 90s Guy Tom. You can follow both of us on Instagram at the 90s Guys. Make sure to check back in every weekday for another episode of the 90s Vlog. And with that, I'll catch you tomorrow, Tom.